What's the one or two mistakes that you see people making when they try to grow their own Instagram? Let people get to know you by posting these more personal type stories that we're connecting with our audience. That is valuable. How do you find enough tangible, applicable value in somebody's day-to-day -day business life that you can make content that doesn't seem to be repetitive? It's going to be repetitive and that's the point. But when you find your pillars that work, you're just repeating them. So one of my repeatable pillars is... Welcome back to another episode and this time social media and scaling strategist Holly Hillier is here to speak about the things that you're curious about. Like, can we still grow Instagram in 2024? How easy or how hard it is? What sort of strategies is she seeing work best with her clients right now? And how in the world is she getting 50 email subscribers a day on her new-ish account posting on social media, one post a day? I need to know that because for a good amount of time, I was putting up two posts a day and I definitely didn't get 50 email subscribers in, good Lord, I don't think I even got 50 email subscribers from my social media. Being honest, like this podcast is a big podcast and most of my subscribers come from the podcast and even then my email is just teeny tiny so this is going to be a good episode for you listener and um holly welcome back thank you i am so excited i promise you we can literally start getting you email subscribers today from your social media <laughs> holly and i we just recorded another episode right and that was before we hit record you the listener if you want to get to know holly and um find out why she worked in France and what possessed her to leave France. Uh, this is this is a good episode then. And, you know, other things like behind the scenes and how she's running her business and um, who works in her business and what does her husband do? All these fun, cool, just tidbits about you, Holly, that somebody might not get to hear otherwise. There's a link to that episode. It's the Before We Hit Record segment. And it's all the cool conversation that podcast hosts and guests have before they hit record, except for we hit record first. And if you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Quajo. I'm the new host of the Art of Online Business podcast. And if you're like, whoa, hey, you're a new face because you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and you can see my face, there's two links for you. One link is so you can find out where Rick is and what he's doing, because it's really cool and he's still here and doing well. And the other link is where he interviewed me in an episode and shares with you why he chose me to be the new host of the Art of Online Business and continue delivering the tips and tricks and strategies and behind the scenes business peaks, if you will, and Facebook ad strategy to help you, an online course creator, grow from low six figures to high six figures. So let's get into this episode, huh, Holly? Yes, I'm so excited. Right? After we had our session between hitting record where we each confess to have too many tabs open on our monitors. Yes, all the time, always. <laughs> Here's where I want you to share your hot take. With TikTok absolutely eating Instagram's lunch and YouTube being what I like to call the king of social media platforms, as in it's super hard to grow, but nowhere else can you get content that you published like a year or two ago still getting great views. What is the case for Instagram in 2024? I didn't prep you for this one, but I know you got a hot take. Yeah, this gets me really excited. So I, so one, I don't believe that TikTok is like taking over Instagram. Two very different ideal clients, two very different like sets of people are using those platforms. And so when I'm talking with my clients about social media, it's literally like, where is your ideal client hanging out? And some will, you know, oh, I have TikTok, I have Instagram, but there, there's a preference on which platform you're on. And so my people are not necessarily on TikTok. They are over on Instagram. And then another interesting point. So we hear all the time, right? It's like, well, Instagram content, you produce it and then it like goes away, right? Kind of like the YouTube, it's it's there for years, right? So true, except, and, and YouTube is 100% going to have a longer lifespan than Instagram. But 
with reels on Instagram, their lifespan is much longer and you can have reels. I, I've had reels from six months ago go viral. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, we got to talk on this episode. I know we already crafted a lot of value, but I'm, I'm making a note right now to come back to that. Please keep going. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. So for, for me, it's like understand the, and, and this is where you, you do want to look at every single platform. Where are your people hanging out? What type of content is it? Where are you best at producing content? And then what is your goal with that? Where is that content driving people? And what behavior are we getting from that platform from our ideal client? And so I know with Instagram, this is, this is where... My, my goal is to convert them to email subscribers versus just followers. And so I create content that does that. And for me, Instagram, and actually funny enough, I also, I connect my Instagram to a Facebook business page and I am, it works just as well. And I'm getting email subscribers there as well. So I know this is like about Instagram, but the user behavior in terms of the outcome that I want, I can drive that on both Instagram and Facebook from one piece of content. My gosh. So the listener is gonna just get a really cool episode where, uh, because you're gonna look at my Instagram and uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. So, <laughs> but I'm welcoming it, asking for it, please, because I don't think I'm getting one subscriber to my email list in two weeks from that account. And okay, so Instagram's where it's at. One of the things I am super curious about is what what's working right now as we're recording this episode in April 9th, 2024, that wasn't working as recently as 2023, just last year. Yeah. So the thing, and gosh, I love being on this podcast because this is all business owners. And so all of my clients are business owners. When I teach Instagram, it is for, and when I say business owner, I don't mean like an influencer or like links, okay? I mean like you are an expert in something and you have value to give, you know, from within you. Not that posting links and being an influencer, it's amazing, it's hard, it's so much work. <laughs> but this, my ideal client is an online business owner. And so right now on Instagram, I, I call it like micro niching or, you know, we've all like, what, 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 is, what is your niche? And, and that's, that's great, but we need to go even deeper. And so when I talk with my clients about micro niching, it is, and, and I can kind of, the easiest way to do it. If we look at like my, my original account was like in wellness. This is the first place that, that I, that I tried this out. And so you start at this very high level. So what does your business provide? And so I sold like fitness and nutrition. Awesome. Okay. So what I was watching people in that field do was post, you know, workouts and recipes and they'd share like their family and like, because like they wanted to be healthy for their kids. And so it all connected but in micro niching, I need you to identify like one thing and normally this one thing. So what I did was I said, okay, so I sell health and fitness. So I'm either going to focus on the fitness side or the wellness side or the, the nutrition side, fitness, nutrition. So I was like, I'm going to focus on nutrition. And I decided on that by doing some market research and seeing what was like going more viral on Instagram, right? And people were saving more recipes than they were workouts, right? Like, so I was like, all right, I can see that people are finding more value in, in, in this. And again, it depends on your ideal client, but going and doing that market research and then asking myself, okay, so fitness, nutrition, and then it is the, how do I provide value? And so for me, Providing value and nutrition, I was like, I'm gonna do some some recipes. Okay, great. So this still isn't like the the secret sauce right now in in micro niching is one value. Obviously, we're we're getting super super niche. We're providing value, but if you can provide value, 
that overcomes an objection of your ideal client, you're like winning. So what I did was I did dessert recipes for weight loss because my ideal client said, I can't lose weight and eat dessert. And so I said, follow me and I will give you dessert recipes that will help you lose weight. I'm almost like everything in me is like, that's not possible. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so this, what happens when you do that is I've gotten really deep. I'm providing value that's savable and shareable. It feel, you know, they actually feel like it's value. Like, oh, I can take this and use it in my life without paying me a dollar. And then I'm also overcoming an objection already just through giving them free content. So I'm already starting this like sales conversation without actually having one. And it connects directly to, to what I sell. And so the next piece is really from there, how you're going to gain your, your email subscribers. But this is where like getting super clear on what, what it is you're selling and that, that one piece. And I like to take it all the way back to the beginning of your funnel. So if you're a business owner, right? So my other account, like I, I teach people how to grow and scale social media. And so the very first step for my clients is the, the social media piece. And my, my business really focuses on growing and scaling full businesses. So all the way up to seven figures through email and automations. But I don't focus on the seven figure business owner that I'm working with. I focus on the business owner who's, you know, they're maybe making like 5,000 a week or a month. And they're looking to get to that. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 5,000 a month. Right. And they're looking to get to that 10,000 a month. They want to break that six figure point. And so they've got to figure out social media, social media messaging and how to do it quickly. So my social media on seven strong focuses on that first step. How do you create social media quickly and easily that will convert instead of focusing on the, let me help you do all the funnels and all of that. So it's one piece, which is social media, which is a, the beginning portion of my business, plus value that's savable and shareable. And then how do we connect that to an opt-in that people really want? And that's how we're getting all the email addresses. Say that again for the person who doesn't want to scrub right back. Yeah. So we're going to want to micro niche, provide value in every single post that they can use. They can use the value, take it and use it in their life. Because this is a mistake I'm seeing. Take it and use it in their life. Then you are going to connect it to a lead magnet, opt-in freemium, whatever you call it, right? Connect it to a lead magnet that is step two of value. So I'm going to give you one dessert recipe. Now I'm going to tell you to comment dessert and I'm going to send you 25 of my high protein dessert recipes. Or if you go over to seven strong, I'm going to teach you how to quickly create a reel. And I'm going to give you an example of a hook and audio to use. And then I'm going to say, comment 100 hooks and I'll send you my free 100 hook guide. Ooh, okay. Okay. So now they get value. It's they, they are trusting me. They're commenting. I'm sending them a lead magnet, gaining their email address. I know exactly what part of my funnel they're in based on the keyword they use. And then I'm able to set up email marketing afterwards to, to sell to them. If you wish that I could just hop in to your Facebook ad manager and run your ads for you, or at least download all my three plus years of experience into your ad so that they would run the right way, you pretty much got your wish. There's a new offer that I made and my clients so far are loving it. It's called Facebook ads to success. And that means for you, I can coach you one-on-one -on -one so that you can successfully run your lead generation ad campaigns, your launch registration ad campaigns, even your sales funnel, SLO, self-liquidating offer funnel ad campaign. Here's how it will work. We will have three calls within 30 days. During the first call, I'm gonna show you the exact ways to get your account 
running optimally. We'll do also like analytics setup if you don't have those set up right so that your ads can function the right way. We'll also look at your funnel and I'll point out to you the areas in your funnel that could be converting better. And I'll make recommendations about how to improve those areas of your funnel. And then if you have running ads currently, we'll look at those ads. Otherwise, we'll go through all the things you need to consider before setting up your ads. In between the calls, you get unlimited access to me that means on slack or voxer or even messenger you get to record your screen or just send me an audio messages or type something but ask about your ads and i'll be able to give you recommendations right there and then we'll set up the ads and then i'll show you how i check up on ads and all the moves that i would make i'll walk you through those and teach you how to make those same moves so that you can successfully manage your own ads with confidence. Head to the link that you can see right on the screen to book your spot for Facebook ads, one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. All right, back to the video. What? Okay, my Instagram account is saying, help me, help me, help me, Holly, please. Um, one more question before we before I go there and submit my Instagram account to your eyes publicly oh geez um so this all sounds good and i'm sure the listener like me has been to youtube and looked up youtubed or googled and found their way to youtube like instagram growth strategies or or swiped past and seen tons of videos on tiktok or instagram about how to grow but what's like the one or two mistakes that you see people making when they try to grow their own like Instagram, like two kind of big ones. One is, and this is, if you've been on Instagram for a while, like this was me. So I should start by saying like, I, I've been on Instagram for, well, not nine years, seven years. I've been doing online businesses for like nine years, but I've been on Instagram for a while, six years. And I, Gosh, it was just last summer that I started implementing these new strategies. But prior to that, my account was stuck at 40,000 followers, which sounds amazing, but it was stuck there for two years. So it doesn't actually matter what that number is. When you are posting every single day and you are stuck, it is painful. And so that was me. I was stuck at 40,000 followers, posting every single day. And it really was, right? It's a definition of insanity, doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. Like that, that was me. And I was like, why am I doing this? Can social media still work? And so when I really reflected back on my account, I was growing Instagram and showing up on Instagram like it was five years ago where I was my own personal brand and my family was mixed in there and like it was like more of like a holly show and like there was value but it was it was like you know i don't want to say mommy blogger but it, it was it was like hey let people and we hear a lot let people get to know you and so sometimes we think that like by posting these more personal type stories that we're connecting with our audience and that that is valuable. And in fact, right now on social media, when someone goes to your account, all they are thinking is what's in it for me. How can this person make my life better? Because there are a million and one people that they can follow. And if they do not quickly know how you can improve their life, and improve their life really for free right there on that page, then they're just going to leave. And so that's one is like trying to kind of just do it all and be the, you know, the person next door, like everyone loves me and, and they know that I do something, but like, so I, I see the, the mix and mingle too much of like family. And then beyond that is what value are you providing? That's the second one. What, is the true value. And people will be like, well, like I, you know, we often think that we're providing value, but if you really take a step back and you ask yourself, like, can someone take what you gave them and tangibly use it and literally see a result in their life? If the answer is no, then it's not enough value.
how do you find enough tangible, applicable value in somebody's day-to-day business life or whatever your niche is that you can make content that doesn't seem to be repetitive? It's going to be repetitive. And that's the point. It's going to be repetitive. And that's the point. Yeah. So this is, I'm so glad that you said that because so my account that was stuck at 40,000 followers, I started posting dessert recipes every single day or like every couple days because it was a lot to make dessert recipes. And I played around with like content pillars. So we've got a couple different content pillars, but really like at this point now that account's so dialed in, I do two things. One's dessert recipes and one is carousels that are like easy crock pot recipes, both of them high protein. So it's kind of the thread that runs together and quick, simple, easy. But I literally, since summer, so I mean, I don't know, we're coming up on a year now. I've grown over a hundred thousand followers by repeating the same thing. Here's another, here's another recipe. Here's another recipe. Here's another recipe. My Holly, my seven strong account. I am, again, I just took back over that account. So we're looking at the data and figuring out which pillars work. But when you find your pillars that work, you're just repeating them. So one of my repeatable pillars is here is your week of hooks. Every week I do one reel that has seven different hooks and I give that to them. Okay. But are you like finding new hooks or is it like every 10 weeks? They're new hooks. They're new hooks. But like, you know, hooks are pretty easy. And then I give some examples and like, People are saving them, they're sharing them, they're using them, and they come back weekly to get their hooks. Okay. And so you, you become, have hooked them. Yeah, they much. know what they're going to get from you. So they know. So now my account, my Holly Hillier account, I mean, I have people are like, oh, yeah, you're the account I go to for dessert recipes. Oh, you're the account that I'm going to go to when I need the trending audio and hooks for my next reel. So when you repeat that value, you are then known for that value. Okay. All right. Not so sure I want to show you my Instagram account now. <laughs> You're about to see my Instagram account. I'm so excited. As soon as you said family, I'm like, dang it, the first row, my wife is there. I like my wife. You know, it's been 15 years. She deserves a spot on my Instagram. She deserves a spot. My beautiful it's children. <laughs> And I will say, so on my Holly Hillier account with my recipes, sometimes my kids will make like a cameo appearance, but it is because my ideal client is a mom, I'm still giving them the same value in terms of recipes. I'm just like throwing that in there for an extra bit of connection. So. Okay. Okay. I'm zooming in. Okay. I... Okay. I love this. Can we, can I, can I literally do like a full, like how I would do an Instagram audit for like a a client? I'll take that. Sure. I mean, so great. Okay. Where are we going? Okay. I love it. So one of the things, so ads manager and strategy partner, Uh that, that great. That's, that's good. So that line is one of the most SEO searchable lines in like all of Instagram. So if you, your ideal client searching for an ads manager probably. So the fact that it says ads manager there is like, you know, that's, that's great. Um, helping course creators get more clients. So obviously course creators, super ideal client, very, you know, easy, get more clients. What, this is a thing that I see people kind of mess up and you, you could get more specific if you want it, but it's good. It's like, they don't really give the result like a strong result. So get more clients. So helping course creators, um, you know, 10 X their clients in 90 days or like more specific. If you could, if you, when you attach numbers, it gets people's attention. And this is true. Like within our content, I'll tell you my recipes ago, my one like going viral right now is like four ingredient. So if I can do like four ingredient or one minute, people love like numbers, three steps to this, or I'll say like 10 X your reach. Um, but again, one thing that I, I will often hear like people in the wellness space is like, have more energy. And I'm like, it's not specific enough. Right. Mm -hmm. So making sure that like, you really know that end goal. And if we can quantify it, it's even, even better. So 
host of the Art of Online Business podcast, uh, DM me grow for info. So DM me grow for info on what? Good point. And I've only had one person DM me grow and they were not the ideal client. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and, and again, so DM me. So anytime we are asking someone to like take an action, right? We, we then, we are asking for their time. So it actually becomes a really big ask. And so DM me grow for, and then it should be like, what's in it for them? What are they going to get? Right. So like that, you know, DM me grow for your, you know, personalized ads growth strategy or something, right? Like something that like, (laughs) that would help. That would be a value that would let them get on my email list. Huh? Oh, geez. Okay. All right. So grow for my behind for like my, the same exact Facebook Legion ads checklist that me and my team use up to, or use to set up. Exactly. Something that's going to get them. You can grab their, their email address. And then same thing, like with the emojis and like the links, it's like, we're asking them to click that link bar and they Mm -hmm. really don't know why. Uh huh. Okay. All right. right? So like, if they're gonna click this link, like, what do you really get? Because otherwise, I mean, they're right now they're just skipping over it. I mean, mo- most likely, unless, especially if, if that's the first thing, right? They they can go to your content, consume some of that, and then come back up. But in terms of getting them to click it right away, they don't know like why they would do it. What's in it for them? So yeah, the numbers speak for themselves. I have one person click that link and this was my converted personal account. So maybe it's grown yeah. by 200, I don't know, since October of 2023. So, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, and then, you know, in terms of highlights, testimonials are going to be your ba- I love, you know, you've got your client testimonials, your courses, testimonials. That's great. Um, the other thing that you could do is like add your offerings in there. Oh right? yeah. Like, it's right there. Yeah. People want, like, they literally, and again, it's similar to, it'd probably be in your link in bio too, right? Like, but what they want to know is like, how can they work with you? Even if you just said like, work with me, and you kind of gave a rundown of like, here's the different ways we could work together. Um, but beyond just testimonials, people are clicking in there to learn more about your programs and, and what you do. Because they really are, if they consume your content, like you can get, Clients, I mean, just, I mean, all of my clients come straight from Instagram, all my leads, all my clients. So what you're saying is, is I could just add a work with me highlight and in there, it's a couple of stories that say like, this is how you can work with me. First, it's like, what do you want? Who do I serve? Go to my website, fill out a Facebook ads management. And don't, and don't tell them to go to your website. Tell them to DM you a word using an automation. So we always on Instagram or asking ourselves, what are the, like, what is the least amount of action they have to take? So if we tell them to go to a website, they're not going to go from your highlight. Remember a website, like go there. You could put the link right, like in your story, but even that Instagram doesn't love as much because it's sending them off their platform. So the best thing that you can do for you, for your client and for the Instagram algorithm is to use an automation, you know, like mini chat and have them common a keyword. Now they're in your DMs. Instagram's happy because it's increased engagement. Your person's happy because they're still within the platform and they're getting everything they asked for without leaving the app. Wow. I um, Some people are going to judge me for this, but I haven't jumped on the mini chat bandwagon yet. So I should, I should start. You're like, I know I see in your account. You really, really should. That is how, I mean, truthfully, it is how I have collect that. That's how I collect all my email addresses, all of them. Okay. Link in the bio is dead then. Is that what you're saying? I mean, it's fine. It's there, but yes. Mini chat. All right, great. I will, I hereby solemnly swear to open up a mini chat account today after we finish recording. Well, I'll have my EA do it. Dang. Okay. All right. I'll send you, we have some, some, um, Again, my husband's like the mini chat, like guru. He's like my tech guru. So he has created like templates that you just like pl- plug in, plug and play templates that literally, I mean, we made $70,000 in seven days using these templates. Super easy. I'm telling you, it is like, it has changed the game on Instagram and it works on Facebook. It's how it works 
on both platforms. It's working in post. It works in your stories. It makes the algorithm happy. They are preferred like partner. It's, it has changed everything for me in terms of sales on Instagram. Now I sound like a mini chat salesperson. Like I, I don't work for mini chat, but it is, it is the perfect partnership. And it's really, it's how people are engaging on Instagram right now. I do a whole mini chat like podcast episode because all the different ways you can use it to make Instagram happy, whether it be links, whether it be just sometimes I use it to just have the value like go straight to them, which then increases my engagement. Like my most recent reel that's going viral, I was like, DM me the word whatever to have the recipe sent to you. So instead of putting the recipe, right? So now I'm getting thousands of comments. And they're all, and that's making the algorithm happier. My people are happy. Everyone's happy. Wow. Okay. Mini chat done. And if like, <laughs> if you're listening to this episode right now and you're like me and you have not used mini chat, then go to the link in the description below and get mini chat. It's there for you. I did it, even though I'm going to do it now in the future. When you're hearing this, I have already done it. I hereby commit to do it. All right. So what else do you see? Yeah. Because, so let's yeah, scroll. Hurt when you're okay. like, don't so when we your look hands. at... Yeah. Even if we, so if we just look at the, like your, your six square, your, your nine square, right here, there's nine. Okay. I want to know, and some of these are good. So that this Ooh. is your wife. This is my wife. Okay. So some, and, and I'm totally good with like both of you. Like, I, I think it's great. To have, she, like, can't, she can't hear you. If you say, no, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think it's great to have both of you on there. Right. Cause it's, it's kind of like a power couple type thing, right? right? So hers are like lead campaign versus sales campaign, best mat metrics for Facebook ads analysis. So one of the things you want to make sure on your feed is yeah. that people know why they would click into it. Understanding that like it needs to have, so unlock more sales with a podcast is, is a good one. One of the things, so it's not only telling them what they'd get, these should all be hooks. So one of the things that I work on with my clients is this triple hook method. So you should have hooks in three places. The first should be on your cover photo. So if I like my cover photos, um, so two steps to increase engagement in your reels, three steps to an irresistible lead magnet that sells while you're off social media. So it tells them why to click, but it's like you, you want this, this hook. And again, what's in it for, for them. So two steps to increase engagement on your reels. So these people are looking for increased engagement, right? Um, three things I would do if I wanted to grow by a thousand followers in the next 30 days. My ideal client wants to grow by a thousand followers in the next 30 days. So on your feed is cover photos with the hooks on them. So they know why they're actually going to click it. And again, what's in it for them, not just descriptive, but like the hook of what's in it for them. And that is going to be huge. Then the second place your hook goes is when you click into your reels within the first two seconds, you got to have a hook on the screen, which is where most people are doing hooks, right? So they're like, if I look oh, at that. So oh, you're saying when I no. click one of these, uh, yeah, so this one. You click, click like lead campaign versus sales campaign. So you don't know. So right away, there should be like the hook as to why they should even watch this. Why should they give you their time? Wow. So that's the second place hook has to go. And it has to be within the first two seconds. Is this a verbal hook? Or are you just talking about like text overlay? Text overlay. Okay. Text overlay. Why they should keep watching. Why they should give you their time. Yep. Exactly. And so a lot of times your hook that's on your cover photo can also be the hook that's, you know, the the very first one on, on your reel. So the, the one that I did, there was like two steps to increase engagement on your reels. When I click into that, my hook is why no one is commenting on your reels. And so the, now they're like, oh, crap, no one's commenting on my reels. I'm actually going to listen to this versus talking. So right? a hook could be like, why using the wrong campaign is burning through all your money. A million percent. Yes. Oh, okay. The negative hooks are often the best. Stop doing this. Like the negative is often a really good hook because they're saying, oh my gosh, that's me. Wow. They identify in that spot. Wow. Yeah. And then okay. the third place for your hook is the very, very top line of your 
caption. So should I use a lead campaign or a sales campaign? There mm -hmm. it would be like, why you shouldn't use XYZ to get XYZ, right? Or okay. why you should use XYZ to get XYZ. So they need to understand like, again, like, why are we even talking about this, right? Like what's in it for me? How can one of these even help me? So then in your caption, I know, I, I know this is a lot. I told you. I no, no, this is good. This is really good. Don't stop. I Keep going. love this. So then in your caption, so this is a, so face to camera, like this reel mm -hmm. is, and, and you, you've got movement, right? You've got your Instagram popping up in the back, like all that's good, right? Because you're keeping this, this visual interest. But in your caption, long captions with the value yeah. are going to be saved more. And what they do is people are reading those. So they may be listening to you, but when you, or they may not, right? A lot of times it's on silent. A lot of times they're, they're not watching your video. But okay. when you have the value in the caption, they're reading it. Your video is playing. And Instagram is saying, this is a longer watch time reel. What? And so the longer watch time reel means you're going to get pushed out to more people. And okay. when it's in the caption, it's it's saved. So we went from this place in Instagram where I wanted super long, like blogger type captions to super short. And now they're back to longer, but they've got to be like step one, step two, step three. So yeah. So what are the best columns on Facebook ads manager that indicate success? Mm -hmm. You should have that all like written out in long form caption too. Okay. But straight up <clears throat> for me, not even for the listener, the listener probably will benefit from this too. Who has time to write long captions and how are you writing these long captions? I know. I know. Well, here's the beautiful thing, right? You said like, but aren't you repeating a lot of things? Yes. So once you've written out these captions, you really are able to like copy and paste a lot of like the meat and then kind of just, just tweak it. But I will tell you, I mean, I mean, truth, you're right. It's going to take you time to, to write this long caption, but, but my social media, my small social media account account is growing by 50 to hundred new followers a day. And I'm getting 50 new email addresses a day. And then I'm selling to them. So we all as business owners get to ask ourselves, where do we allocate our time? And it 100% is a choice. If we decide I'm going to spend maybe 45 minutes making this reel and making this caption and making sure, you know, mini chat is set up and then it hooks up to the good opt-in and then to an email series. Is that 45 minutes the best use of my time? And we get to answer that. And so I think for me, with business owners who, you know, you don't, you, you're, if you're a new business owner, and you don't have a large network and you know you're not on podcasts or networking events or you know you don't have an instagram like to me instagram was this place that i could go and start with zero followers and reach people every single day that i could have never reached otherwise and so it's this really and it's free it's this really low barrier of entry for new business owners now the frustrating thing when i work with my like seven figure clients and they're like, Holly, I don't know that that is worth my time. Right. I'm already made like that one hour of their day is, is, is worth a lot. And so we have, I've worked to train like social media, like their teams. Right. And I think realizing that in the beginning, you do need to be integrally involved with your social media and your face is going to do better than, you know, faceless, all of that. But you can get in this pattern. So with my account where I make the recipes, I make the recipes, but I send that video to someone else and they edit it. And the other thing though, we don't need to get on this, but it's like understanding your, your data. So I weekly am looking at my data, what's working best, what first clip is working best. And then I'm giving the team that's making that real the feedback. So for me, I don't believe that social media is somewhere you can just like hand it over and never show up there again if you're really truly using it as a strong top of funnel. Wow. They say don't give the farm away. 
Now, maybe you've given away a quarter of the farm. I know for a fact you haven't given away the whole farm because I got at least six more questions that are in my notes as I'm like scrambling to type what you're saying that I want to ask you right here on this podcast. And I know the listener does too, but we got to end this episode. So where can I and the listener go to get more of this goodness from you about growing our Instagram so we could get 50 emails a week? I would love that. I know. I mean, and, and go, so you can go over to my Instagram account at seven strong co at seven strong co. Um, I also have a podcast called the seven strong podcast. And I give away, like, I am just, I love giving the tactical stuff and literally like, I mean, you guys know, like, I hope that you can take this and use this, but yeah, if you go over to my Instagram at seven strong co, you'll also see, like, look at it from the, how do I dissect some of these into as funnels, right? You'll be able to see my my funnels. And, you know, I do think as well, one of the things, so my, my one, my wellness business is pretty much just one offer all the time. So I'm able to keep the free, same free lead magnet. My Seven Strong Co., we have different offers kind of quarterly. And so I'm changing my lead magnet and I'm slightly tweaking content. So I really want to like empower all of you to like understand that Yes, we're micro niching, but you're able to tweak messaging to truly get like your ideal client's attention and your ideal client at different parts of your funnel. And so it really is like very, very small changes that allow you to create these different lead magnets to sell different offers while all still being contained in the same micro niche account. Anyone who has an Instagram account that has an online business, which should be everyone listening, you got to go back. This we just had a master class, and um, that truly, that truly was. Oh my gosh! Thank you. I mean, it's just like my favorite thing in the world to talk about, and I just, I just want every business owner to feel so empowered that they literally, you, you have a tool at your fingertips. It truly can help you grow your business, and. If you're like me, like I was so frustrated two years ago, like I, I know, and, and it can change. And, you know, I'm sure I had an account with 40,000 followers, but my other account that I just started growing, like it's just a baby account with a couple thousand followers. And we're just slowly and steadily growing and, and again, gaining email subscribers and, and making sales. And so no matter what point you're at, like this can be a tool for you. There's no saturation. Instagram, Instagram is here to keep people on their platform. That's their goal. And so when our goal become like, when we work together, like the algorithm truly has become my compass and like best friend. I just do what the algorithm tells me, which makes my ideal clients happy because they're getting what they want on Instagram and it makes Instagram happy. So it's just, it's such an incredible place. And I'm just so thankful for you having me on the podcast today.